package of gum, please. No gum. Then give me a chocolate almond bar. Chocolate almond bar? No chocolate almond bars and no gum. Where have you been? Made up your mind yet, soldier? Hmm? Well, yeah. Uh, how much? Which one? This one. Water. Got your magazine. Excuse me, miss, is this seat taken? Uh, do you mind if I sit here? Are you riding alone or traveling with luggage? Cigarette? You going my way? Are you trying to start a conversation with me? Right Hi, everybody! Uh, Hi, everybody. Hi, Mac. All right, give me one yeah. You a Guadal? Hmm. I wouldn't be a bit surprised if I was in the force that moved you in there. It could be. We sure caught it for the first couple of weeks down there. Hiya, pal. What are you crying for, dope? The sailor sent a load to you, that's all. The kid must have some beef against the Navy. Say, that's quite a layout out there. I don't like prisons. They give me the creeps. Well, folks, you got nothing to worry about. If you get in the jam and wind up in the clink, I got a friend who can give you a low number. Hot coffee. Get him on his house. Coffee. <laughs> Rock break scissors. Oh, don't I ever win one hey, of these? You'll catch on to it. Scissors cuts paper. Holy cat! <laughs> <laughs> What's on, more? Let's, on, let's go. Let's try it again. Let's try it again. Rock breaks scissors. Come on, come on. Oh! <laughs> paper covers rock. Oh! oh. <laughs> scissors cuts paper. I've been waiting for this. <laughs> oh! <laughs> <laughs> no matter how this works, I lose out. You want to try it? Too rich for me. How about you, miss? I'm afraid I couldn't take it. <laughs> what do you say we look up the coffee guy and get something to eat? I'm loaded. I'll buy everybody coffee and sandwiches. Oh, no ifs, ands, or buts. The treat's on me. Papa's on a leave. I'll be back in a flash with the trash. I'll help you care. Are you going home on furlough? Yeah. Yeah, I'm on furlough. Give me a furlough. Is this your first time home since, uh... Well, I haven't got any regular home or family. I'm just going to visit. You're traveling on business or... No, I'm on uh, vacation. Christmas vacation. What kind of business are you in? I mean, what sort of work do you do? Well, I, uh... I travel. Oh. I'm a, a traveling saleswoman, uh, sales lady. I never heard any jokes about traveling sales ladies. I guess there aren't many. I never would have guessed that's what you did. Oh, what? What would you have guessed? Oh, that you were, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, a secretary, you know, uh, a model, maybe, a uh, school teacher. Well, I once was a secretary, and I wanted to be a model. 
So that would have been pretty good guessing. You're going all the way to L.A.? No. No, I haven't much farther to go, as a matter of fact. I'm getting off at Pine Hill. Oh. Oh, uh... Pine Hill, your home? No. I'm just visiting my uncle. Mm -hmm. That's funny. Uh, I'm going to Pine Hill, too. Oh, really? Uh-huh. Yeah, uh, my, uh, I'm visiting there. My sister lives in Pine Hill. Well, I'll bet she'd be very glad to see you. I hope so. Maybe we'll uh, run into each other there. Yes. Bye. Bye. 617 North Elm Street. Oh, wait. Uh, if, uh, if anybody tried to telephone you, uh, how could they get you? Well, um, my uncle's name is in the telephone book. Henry Marshall. Henry Marshall? Mm -hmm. Good. Oh, what's your name? Mary. Mary, Mary Marshall. Mary Marshall. Uh -huh. Bye. Goodbye. Wait a minute. Uh, look, if somebody calls and says it's Zachary Morgan, that, that's me. Oh. <laughs> Glad to meet you. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> you want, just holler. We'd like to do whatever we can. all healed, but the wound in your mind is going to take a little more time. That's why the doctors gave you this 10-day leave from the hospital, to prove to you that you can go out in the world again and find a place for yourself. to take a little while to get your timing back. You'll still drop things and be a little slow, but you'll get well. They told you you would. The important thing is not to get too tired, not to give in. Then you won't get any of those, those things that wind up with a shot in the arm or a tub or that little room with a barred window. You can fight those things off, Zach, if you'll believe that you'll get well. Stop thinking about yourself, Zach. You'll get well. You'll get well. You'll get well. <laughs> Come on in. How was your trip? Oh, it was fine. You haven't changed, Mary? Not at all. Thank you, Aunt Sarah. Oh, it's so good to be here. I'm so glad to have you with us, dear. Awfully glad. Barbara, come on down. You're going to share Barbara's room. Oh, dear, I don't want to disturb anybody. I don't oh, want to. Oh, nonsense. Barbara would love to have you. Here, for heaven's sake, give me your coat. <laughs> anyway, it's the guest room, or it was. 
before Barbara was born. Besides, I think it'll be a very good thing for Barbara. She's 17. 17? And she's pretty, spoiled, and at an age. Oh, you know. I think an older girl would be a very good thing for her right now, like you. Yes, like you. Now, there's a million things to talk about, but first you want to wash up. Hello, Mary. I'm awfully glad to see you. Hello, Barbara. Well, I never would have known you. She's grown into a beauty. Welcome home. Take Mary up to your room, dear. <laughs> Follow me, lady, to my boudoir. Although it's small, not much bigger than the cell. Oh, I'm sorry, Mary. Look, there's just one thing. We all know that I've been in prison and that I'm going back in eight days. And there's no use pretending it isn't so. But it just won't be any good unless everybody says what he thinks. And doesn't try to cover up. Oh, you're a fine girl, Mary. Now go up and see your room. That's Mom's room. I don't remember, Mary. Were you ever here before? Only once, when you were just a kid. Oh. Here we are. All the comforts of home. That's ah, nice, Barbara. We even have our own bathroom. This where I sleep? Mm-hmm. I was just thinking, that's an awfully nice suit you have on, Mary. Oh, well, thank you, Barbara. You were thinking of something else, too. Well, as a matter of fact, I was. If we're gonna put this, I'll take it. You may as well tell me so we can both get it off our minds. Well, I... I just... Well, you see, I hadn't known that they gave these vacations or furloughs to people that... Well, you don't have to be shy about it, Barbara. I didn't know about it either. Della Warden told me that in this state and in a few other states, they give special furloughs to people for good behavior. Well, I think it's wonderful if they have that confidence in you. Yes. I think so, too. Mary? Yes, I heard you. You must have been looking forward to it, Mary. I was looking forward to seeing you, Aunt Sarah. Oh, that's sweet of you, dear. As a matter of fact, selfish. I've been doing a lot of thinking in the past three years, Aunt Sarah. And what sort of things were you thinking, Mary? Coming out into the world and... Even coming here, I had a feeling that... Honey, you've got to stop being afraid. You've got to stop feeling that you're branded like people were in the old days. You've done something. You're paying your debt to society. Most people are willing to let it go at that. I know, Aunt Sarah, but coming out into the world and seeing everybody in uniform, everybody doing something, I... I just don't belong. I, I don't fit in. And dreams that I've had for the future are just impossible. Well, most dreams are, Mary. It's just the dreaming that counts. Nobody gets exactly what he wants out of life. One of the first things you learn is to make compromises with your dreams. But I'm not talking about palaces and rainbows, Aunt Sarah. I'm talking about a home. A home like this, with a kitchen and a stove and an icebox. A, 
and a husband and a child. Yes, I have all that. Yet I used to dream about palaces and rainbows. But you're happy. Of course, because I didn't hold out for too much. I accepted what I thought was second best and made that do. Oh, it's something that everybody learns sooner or later. You have to get used to accepting what you think is second best, and then you find out it's first best after all. No, I I don't see how how that could. Yes, this is Mr. Marshall's home. Who is it? Oh, just a minute. It's for her. And why not? Mary, it's for you. Barbara, come help me set the table. Hello? Well, yes, Zach, this is me. Well, of course I meant it. Well, I, I'd love to, but what about your sister? Oh, well, that's too bad. Well, I'd love to, Zach, but, uh, wait, wait just a minute. Aunt Sarah, mm -hmm. uh, this is a soldier I met on the train, and he's really very nice. He came here to visit his sister and finds that she's gone to California. And... He wants me to go to dinner with him, and I was wondering if... A soldier? Well, why not ask him here for dinner? May I, Aunt Sarah? You ask him this instant, and tell him not to be late. Hello, Zach. Uh, you're to come over here to dinner, Zach. Oh, but we all want you. Yes, and Aunt Sarah says not to be late. <laughs> it's 617 Elm Street. That's right. All right, goodbye. How did you ever happen to meet him? Well, I, Was he good looking? Well, I don't know. You don't know? Well, didn't you notice? Now, Barbara, no more lallygagging. Hurry and get the table set. Your father will be here any minute. Whoa! A soldier for dinner! Oh, Babs. Hi, Dad. Mary get here yet? Oh, yeah, she's in there. Ah, good. Thanks. Hello there. Hello. Welcome, Mary. Welcome. Hello, Uncle Henry. Well, you're looking fine. Fine. Thank you. I'm happy to have you here, Mary. I mean it. Hey, you uh, must behave really well for them to give you this vacation. I think that's fine. Well, it's just that they don't exactly look upon me as a criminal. No, of course not. I don't think of you as a criminal either. Otherwise, I'd never put up the lawyer money at your trial. Oh, I think you would, Henry. Ah, uh, Sarah. What's done is done. Let's think no more about it. I want you to have a good time while you're here, Mary. Thank you. I want you to feel just like any one of us. She's going to, Henry. We've invited the soldiers to dinner for her. You did? Mm-hmm. Well, it's fine. Fine. Oh. Well, I'm sorry. I thought this was the Marshall house. It is. Is Miss Marshall here? I'm Miss Marshall. I mean, you're uh, Mary Marshall. Well, oh, Barbara, she... stop teasing that young man. I'm Mary's aunt. You're Zachary? Yes. This is Barbara, my foolish daughter. Hello. Hi. May I take your coat and hat? Thank you. Hello, Zach. Hello, Mary. My, you were quick. <laughs> Mary, take Zachary into the living room. Make him comfortable. Thank you. We'll be in a minute. Uh, Barbara, come with me, dear. I need you. Oh, Mother. This is swell. I haven't been in a real home like this in almost as long as I can remember. Hmm? It's too bad about you missing your sister. Well, uh, Mary, uh, I'm in this house under false pretenses. Uh, I haven't any sister. I just made all that up. And you said you were getting off the train at Pine Hill. I had to make up some sort of excuse so I could get off with you. Ah, good evening. Oh, uh, Uncle Henry, this is Zachary Morgan, my uncle. Happy to have you here, Sergeant. Thank you. Happy. Make yourself at home. Thank you. Happy to do whatever we can for the armed forces. Man always feels these days, you know, he's not doing enough. Uh, 
How about a drink? I have some bourbon. No, thank you. I'm not drinking uh, just now. Oh, well, let you know a little secret. Neither am I. That's a funny thing. People that haven't no warning. Oh, fine, fine. People that can't get it, well, you ought to see the act they put on my drugstore to get that stuff. <laughs> Supper's ready. Come and get it. Hungry? Mary, you sit over here. Zach, down there. Thanks. We thank you, God, for our daily bread. We will do our best to deserve it. We know that you are present here with us, that you are smiling upon our two guests, Mary and Zachary. Please look after all our dear ones and all the boys who are fighting for our country. Amen. You're not very used to saying grace, are you, Zach? No, in the Army, I guess you don't have time. Well, didn't you even say it when you were a kid? When I was a kid, I did. It's just sort of routine. You say it as if you meant it, sir. I do, Sergeant. Makes me want to say that I am grateful, too, for being here, everything. Thank you, Zachary. You must be quite a soldier. I wouldn't say that. The Good Conduct Medal, two campaigns in the South Pacific, and the Purple Heart. For heaven's sake, Barbara, where'd you learn all that? Oh, a girl can't no medals like she does boogie-woogie. But the Purple Heart, that means you were wounded. Barbara, stop asking questions. I'm sure Sergeant Morgan doesn't like it. Well, come on, Zach. Tell us how you got to be a hero. Barbara, after dinner, you go upstairs and take off some of that lipstick. Looks as if you fell in a pot of red paint. Go on, eat your soup, Sergeant. Before it gets cold, that's orders. You must have been disappointed not to find your sister. Well, Mrs. Marshall, I... Oh, uh, she took a defense job in, in uh, California. Didn't she? Are you mad at me, Zach? Huh? For asking all those questions? No. I'm not mad. You mad? <laughs> no, I'm not mad. Huh? Dad, I want to ask you a question. All right. Fire away. You know, you never told me anything about Mary. I mean, why she was sent to prison and You why can she... find out about that some other time. When you're a little older. But it can't be so secret. I don't see why I shouldn't know. Barbara, find out about that some other time. Just that Mary made a little mistake, and that's all there is to it. But they don't send people to prison for just doing nothing. Now, look, Barbara, I'm trying to listen to the radio and work this puzzle, and I can't take on any other jobs at the moment. But what if my friends ask me about her? What do I tell them? They want to know Just tell them that Mary is your cousin. From that point on, they can mind their own business. And it seems to me that your business might be helping your mother out in the kitchen. Oh, Dad. Sometimes the way you talk to me, you make me feel like I'm an adopted daughter or something. <laughs> Experts making those pictures. I, I guess that's the way they see the war. Beach a mile long, and thousands of soldiers and tanks and machine guns and everything. I guess that's the way it is. But it wasn't that way for you, huh? Well, it's just a difference in size. To a guy that's in it, the war is about 10 feet wide and kind of empty. It, it's you and a couple of fellas in your company, maybe, maybe a couple of Japs. It's, it's all kind of mixed up. Uh, Sometimes it's 
all full of noise, and sometimes it's quiet. It's it all depends on what you're thinking about, I guess. It depends on how scared you are, how cold you are, and how wet you are. I guess if you ask a hundred guys what the war is like, they'd all give you a different answer. Mary, you know what? I mean, usually you don't like to talk about it. I never said anything about it before, not to anybody. I'm sorry, I... No. No, I feel kind of good. Let's go have a drink or something. Sit back here. Had that booth reserved for you. Nothing's too good for the Army. No offense, Mint Sailor. Okay, my friend. You see, I'm an old Army man myself. Yes, sir. What do they have, Mary? Oh, a um, cup of coffee. Oh, come on, it's Christmas. The sky's the limit. Have, uh, have a piece of pie with it. <laughs> no, I'll just have a cup of coffee. Two coffees. Coming up. Two cups of java. Sure you won't have anything else? Not after that wonderful dinner Aunt Sarah prepared for us. They're nice people. You're nice people, too. Hot Java for the Army. Oh, social error. There you are. Hey, soldier, you've certainly been places. Would you like some cream, Mary? No, thanks. You know, I was just a boy of 18 over in France in World War Number 1. You know, they're kidding themselves. This is the same kind of war. Sure you want to have some cream? No, I don't use it. The Navy, Marine, Air Force, they're okay. But this one's gonna be one just like the last one. A soldier like you or me walking out on his own two feet and slugging it out. <laughs> I took off some weight since my time. Used to be heavyweight champion of the regiment. Got a couple of funny medals. Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir, when this thing starts, I try to sign up again. I tell them I want a chance to knock a couple of Jap heads together. I still do it, too. Squash them like eggs, I could. They won't let me fight. Why? On account of this tick in my face. Nothing touched me in that last war. Oh, I got a bit of shell shock. It left me with this. Nobody ever notices it. But that young doctor squirt, not dry behind his ears, he turns me down. I don't get it. <laughs> I think you ought to know something. What is it, Zach? Well, I, I wish I could tell you. You probably think. I bet I could do better than that. you were asleep. No, I've been burning the midnight oil. It's my morale list. <laughs> it's fun to think that I'm the pit-up girl for at least five fellows. And it's part of the war effort. I keep up their morale, maybe. Must be nice to be able to keep up somebody's morale. Well, I imagine you could write to a lot of them. You know, they just like to get mail from anybody. I mean, you don't have to know them awfully well to... Well, what I mean is that... 
When I was 17, I had a little trouble finding the right words, too. Uh, is Zach stationed here? Or? Barbara, what I'm in prison for isn't catching. I'm sorry, Mary. I, I keep hurting you, and I, I really don't want to. But I guess it is uncomfortable for you to, to meet somebody who's been in prison. But maybe when you get to know me, you'll feel differently. I want to know you, Mary. Really, I do. How much do you know about me? Not much. Mother and Dad still treat me like a child. Everything's a big secret. I don't think it would hurt for you to know. As a matter of fact, I think it might help. When I was your age, my mother died. Oh, I remember her. Way back when I was young. She used to make clothes for my favorite doll. Yes, yeah, she was wonderful with her hands. And sometime after that, my father went north on business. And then when he died, I was on my own. I got a pretty good job as a secretary. And my job brought me in contact with a lot of nice men. One of whom might have turned out, I thought, to be the one who would give me all the things that you dream about when you're 20 and, and lonely. One day, when I was called into my boss's office, he invited me to a party in his apartment. He was single, and I started dreaming. Bosses do marry their secretaries. I took what money I'd saved and I bought an evening dress. I thought it was very fancy. I wanted to look good in front of his high-class friends. He'd sent me an orchid, a white orchid, the first one I'd ever had. I was wearing it. When the door opened, I walked into the biggest apartment I'd ever seen. I thought it was rich and elegant. I'd wanted to impress him, so I got there a little late. I wanted to make an entrance all by myself, but nobody else was there. I should have had sense enough then to get out, but I didn't. He'd been drinking a long time before I got there, I guess, and, and he kept right on. He told me that he hadn't invited anyone else, and that the white orchid and all that was just his way of getting me up there. I, I tried to talk my way out, and. And then when that didn't work, I made a break for it. I didn't scream. I was too frightened, I guess. I tried to get away from him, but I couldn't. He seemed to be everywhere. Oh, it was all mixed up like some terrible kind of a dream. Once I almost got away when he fell over a chair, but he caught me again and dragged me back. Then I pushed him as hard as I could, and he fell back through the window. His apartment was on the 14th floor. Oh, Mary, how, how awful. Maybe I shouldn't have told you. No, I, I'm glad you did. But it's wrong. They, they shouldn't have sent you to prison. If I'd been lucky enough to get away before he was killed, then there wouldn't have been any crime. But after all, a man was dead. The jury said, manslaughter. Guilty. Well, that meant six years. Forgive me, Mary. <laughs> oh, Mary, see who that is, will you? Mm -hmm. Hello. Oh, good morning, Zach. Well, 
Well, if it's important, of course I can see you. Do you want to come here? Well, uh, I'd rather not. I hate to keep barging in on your uncle's house. Uh, Mary, I want to talk to you about last night, and I need some time. <laughs> well, I have the time, plenty of time. Where do you want to meet? Well, I asked about here, and they say there's a bus that goes up to the lake. It's pretty out there, and there aren't so many people. <laughs> I told you there was no use wasting any gas. It's only a short walk from here. I know. You're trying to wear me out before we tee off. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> Hiya, Chuck. How have you been? Hiya. Hiya. All day, huh? Fine. What's so pretty? Hiya. Part of the country? Mm hmm. I was born in Maryland. You get used to Christmas time being cold and snowy. I don't know. This seems more like Christmas to me than the kind they have back east. I mean, this is more like the country where they celebrated the first Christmas. This reminds me of a lake I used to go to when I was a kid. I, every spring I had a job repairing the boats. <laughs> I want to tell you why I got mad at that man in the coffee shop last night and why I walked away from you after I threw that rock at the lamppost and missed it. I knew there must be some reason, but you, you don't have to tell me. Look, I was brought up in a home, an orphan's home. That's nothing to be ashamed of. Not, it's not like being in prison or anything like that. No. Well, in the home there was a janitor. This fellow had been the last war. The young guy. He was a shell shock case. Whenever we could get our hands on any firecrackers, we'd bang him off and laugh at him when he jumped. Well, the fellow in the coffee shop reminded me of the janitor, and they both made me think of myself and what I'd be like in a few years. The only difference is that. Now in the hospital, they have a fancy name for it. Neuropsychiatric. But the doctors must know a lot more about it now than they did during the last war. Maybe. They don't know something about me that I know. You see, before I became an engineer, I was an athlete, a pretty good one. I know what my timing used to be. They don't, and it's gone, Mary. Before this happened to me, I could have hit that lamppost all day. I don't know why I'm bothering you. <laughs> yes, I do. I know why I'm bothering you. Because I feel so much better when I talk to you. I like to be with you. I like to be with you, too. Mary, I want to talk about you. Listen, uh, uh, tell me. What? Well, uh, for instance, uh, how did you become a traveling sales lady? And what do you sell? Well, uh, as I told you, I started out wanting to be a model. And uh, after that, I I got a job with a dress manufacturing company. And, and now I travel for them. Well, uh, but where do you travel? Uh, after your vacation, where, where do you go? I go back to Dallas. And from Dallas, I go to New Orleans. New Orleans? I've, I've been there since well time. Well, you've been to New Orleans. Mm -hmm. Have you ever been to Florida? No. I go from New Orleans to Florida. New Orleans to Florida, right? Palm Beach. Mary, can you make me believe in myself the way you believe in yourself? What makes you think I do? I can tell. 
the way you talk, the way you walk, the way you look, the way you hold your head. Well, maybe that's just make-believe. Um, why don't we go down here by the rock, huh? Like boats? Mm-hmm. You? Some little kid probably owned that boat. Thought it could take him all the way around the world and back. I wish it could. I wish we could get on it and sail away to... Where would you like to go? Not, not to Florida or New Orleans. <laughs> It's a place like the moon, maybe. With a good breeze and a good compass, maybe we could find a place. Well, could we? We're a real boat and the moon a real place. Would you go? There's no harm in dreaming. I'd go. I'm not going to have you run out on me again. Oh. 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 Thank you, thank you, fun and all. I never could figure out why the pudding never gets burned. <laughs> I've never been able to figure that out either. Must be the alcohol and the brandy, huh? Something. Personally, I think it's a shame to burn good brandy. That quart I brought home last week was imported cognac. Oh, don't worry, Henry. I didn't burn up the whole quart. Oh, I wouldn't trust Mom with it, Dad. Maybe you're right. Remember last year how Ma got going on just a glass of sherry? Oh, now, I'm not going to listen to that again. You may not believe this about your dear Aunt Sarah, but last year she got high as a kite. <laughs> They're trying to drag out a family skeleton. Mrs. Marshall, I won't listen to them. Oh, it's just one of those little things that happen. People start exaggerating. Exaggerate my eye, it's as true as I sit here. Last year, Mother and I had a glass of sherry to bring in the new year. And then we went to a little gathering, all the way across town it was. Mother had her skirt on backwards, backwards. See here, Henry, if you're in such good voice, how about a Christmas carol? Aunt Sarah, something tells me you're trying to change the subject. Nothing of the sort. Christmas carols go with plum pudding, and that's what we're eating, plum pudding. Well, Sarah, you don't have to work so hard at it. I'm a pretty good baritone, I don't need much urging. Well, what'll it be? Oh, I think I like best. Come all ye faithful. Fine, fine. Come all ye faithful it is. Me, oh no. Me. Oh, come all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. Oh, come ye, oh, come ye to Bethlehem. Come and behold him. Born the king of angels, oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, <laughs> come, come, let us adore him. Christ <laughs> Well, it feels pretty comfortable to have another man's voice around here at Christmas time. I'm sure Barbara's doing her best to arrange that for you, Henry. <laughs> Mother. Oh, darling, maybe family jokes are in bad taste. They make the guests feel out of place. No, ma'am. I haven't felt so easy in a long time. But it's the best Christmas dinner I ever had. Yesterday, I was a stranger here. I, I mean, I, I felt like a prisoner inside myself. And now, uh, just to be at a home like this with people like you, Maybe some place I can come back to next month or, or next year. Did I say something? No, Zach, no. It's just a very Chris sentimentalist. Christmas. 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 Mary, what's the matter? Was there anything I said? Had anything to do with this afternoon? No, it's just a combination of things. The pudding and the, the singing and the very nice things you said. First time my singing ever brought anybody to tears. Maybe I'd better get out of here, huh? It isn't polite to eat and run. I mean, Pine Hill, I ought to leave you alone. 
You're just fishing. You want me to ask you to stay? Well, ask me. Please stay. Sarah, this is silly. We can't just sit here all night. Well, Henry, they've got to have a couple of minutes to talk things over. They've had a couple of minutes. Come on, Dad. Let's go on in. Oh, but we'd better give them a warning first. Well, that's all the plum pudding I can eat. Can't eat it another bit. Let's play the radio. Fine, fine. It's present time, present time. Henry's going to act to Santa Claus. Come on. Hey, I'm Mother really there for you, dear. Oh, that for me, thank you. Look at the size uh, yeah. of it. Can I oh, no, you can't. Can I, I bet I know what it is. Oh, Henry, you darling, you did get it off you. Oh, look at it. Look at it. Oh, look at it. Oh, thank you so much. Oh, look at it. That's a big surprise. I want to make sure you Oh, I hope you like it, dear. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Oh, I understood, Mary. When Zach said he was a Stranger, you felt as if the words were coming from your own lips. Might have happened to any girl. Could have been just Christmas sentiment. Good night, Mary. Good night, Uncle Henry. Good night. Don't forget to turn out the lights, Sarah. All right, dear. So don't worry about making a scene. Well, I, I'm not worrying about that, Aunt Sarah. I was just wondering if I shouldn't tell him about me. Oh, not for the world. You don't think so? Well, why? Well, he trusts me, and it doesn't seem fair. Oh, but there's no reason for it, Mary. He'll only be here for a few days. He's lonely, and you're making things pleasant for him. That's not the reason I'm seeing him, Aunt Sarah. Because I like him. I like him a lot. Of course you do, dear, but it isn't as if you were going to marry him. No. I was going to marry him. I didn't mean it like that, dear. I know. Have fun, Mary. See Zach every day if you like. Act like any other girl. I'd try, Aunt Sarah, but I... I can't seem to make myself feel like any other girl. I just... feel like me. And that's pretty darn good. Now you have fun. Hey, you two. What's cooking? Remember, Mary, I don't think so. Good night, dear. Good night, sir. She doesn't think so. What? She doesn't think there really is a Santa Claus. Mm -hmm. Long skirt? But it's for New Year's Eve. It has to be long. Isn't it a little old for you, dear? Well, for heaven's sakes, Mother, I'm going out with the lieutenant. Yes, darling, I'm quite aware of the responsibility of the occasion, but that neckline. Oh, so that's it. Well, for your information, Mother, this neckline's a morale builder. How would you like to try on this one? Oh, that's lovely. Yes, it's one of the best designs we have. Oh, no, Mommy, please, I want this one. Oh, <laughs> all right, dear. <laughs> it fits you perfect. Oh, and it feels perfect, too. I'll be right back. You like this one, don't you, Mary? It's lovely. Then you're going to have it. Oh, no. Uh -uh. Now, you listen to me, Mary. You can't wear the same clothes day after day. Your soldier boy's going to get tired of them. <laughs> well, I've been fooling him well enough so far. 
I've been wearing one blouse after another. I don't need a dress, dear. Now, Zach's made a big thing of inviting us all to this New Year's Eve party. You can't wear a suit. Huh. I'll manage. Henry and I have talked it over. We want you to have a dress. Hmm. Oh, Henry will be so disappointed if you don't accept it. Darling, I'll only be able to wear it once. It'll be out of style in three years. Then we'll burn it. Miss, yes. my niece would like to try on this dress. Oh, it'll be fine on you. Go on, dear, try it on. Well, all right, I'll try it on. <laughs> How about you, Mrs. Marshall? Oh, thank you, my lavender is still good. <laughs> oh, Mother, she's gonna be swell. Oh. oh, thank you. Now, you run along and pick up your father at the store. Okay. Oh, thanks again. You're so wonderful. You know how impatient your father is. Now run along. <laughs> how much is this dress? Sixty-nine dollars. Oh. Would you take the tag off, please? Hmm? Look. Here's thirty dollars. And when my aunt asks you the price, do you tell her it's thirty-nine instead of sixty-nine dollars? It's a box. Miss. How much was that dress? Thirty-nine dollars. Well, I'll give you twenty dollars. And when I ask you again how much it was, you tell me it's nineteen dollars. You like it? Oh, it's darling, Anya. Isn't it sweet? It was made for you. Uh, miss, how much is this dress? And uh, nineteen dollars. Oh, that's a wonderful buy. <laughs> what are you laughing at? <laughs> How do you like my dress? Well, isn't it? Some half chick, huh? <laughs> Hello, Zach. Do come in. Hello, Barbara. Don't you notice anything, Zach? Where? About me. Uh, got on too much lipstick again. Oh. <laughs> Hello, Zach. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh well. Oh. Lieutenant Bruce, this is Sergeant Morgan. Oh, uh, hello, Lieutenant. How do you do? Isn't a sergeant supposed to salute a lieutenant? Only on the street. Anyhow, from the decoration the sergeant's wearing, I'm the one who ought to do the saluting. That's not what it says in the book. My coat, lieutenant? Sure, your majesty. Henry, are you ready? No, sir, I'm down here in my bathrobe, working on this puzzle. No hesitation, dear. We'll be right down. Fine, Good night, fine. Good night, baby. Take care of her, lieutenant. Oh, why does everybody treat me like a child? I can take care of myself. We won't be late. Good night, Mr. Marshall. Good night, sir. Uh, Sergeant. Good night, sir. Oh, here's a nice big piece of sky for you, Mr. Marshall. Oh, get your hat. We're ready. Now, let's get going, Zach, before they change their mind. Come back. And my gloves and my purse and... Sarah. Now, where is she? Sarah, are we going to... Henry, you let the cellar light on. Mrs. Marshall, uh, this is for you. I hope you like camellias. This is for you, Mary. I hope you like white orchids. Oh, thank you, Zach. I haven't had a corsage in years. Henry, did you lock the kitchen door? Oh, let's go, Sam. There's some mistake. Hmm? I knew I'd do it. Well, that's what happens when a man gets mixed up in things he shouldn't. The orchids are for you, Mary. Oh, that's all right, Aunt Sarah. Sarah, are we going tonight? Now, the comedians were promised to me, and I'm going to have them. Oh, it, it really doesn't matter. These were intended for you. Sarah. Well, darling, just give me a 
admit it. Look at that. Oh, Sarah. We're going to be late. Flowers make you feel so like a party. Wasn't that sweet of Zach? Sarah? Oh, Henry. You're always so impatient. Oh. Have you got the key? Oh, never mind. Tell me, Johnny, are you sure it's all right for a girl to go in the YMCA? <laughs> But every year at New Year's, I get so excited and sort of upset. I know what you mean. It's, uh, it's like being in on something big, something important. That's it, exactly. Back to your partners with a right and left grand. Thanks. Thanks, Mary. That was... Thank you, Uncle Henry. Well... In every lovely summer's day, in everything that's light and gay, I'll always think of you. Mary, you know, two weeks ago, if somebody had told me I'd be dancing with a girl like you, you know what I'd have said? No, what would you have said? I'd have said, uh, I'd have said I wouldn't be dancing with a girl like you. <laughs> <laughs> looking at the moon, but I'll be seeing you. recognize me in the outfit Uncle Sam gave me. No, I'm sorry, I don't. Charlie Hartman in the accounting department. Oh, yes, I'm terribly sorry. I'd forgotten. This is uh, Sergeant Morgan. Uh, this Hello. is Charlie Hi. Hartman. How about a dance? Boy, am I surprised to see you, Mary. trying to give me a brush. What happened? You know, I thought you were still... Well, I am. They, uh, they gave me a 10-day Christmas vacation. Oh, good. You're going to be around? Yes. Charlie, um, the fellow I'm with, he, he doesn't know about me, and I'd appreciate it very much if, you know, you wouldn't... Sure, Mary, forget it. Thanks, Charlie. Excuse me, I have a light. Oh, sure. yes, Sergeant. Have a cigar. Oh, thank you, sir. You've been to South Pacific. Yes, sir. Thank you. Is this the kind of man we want to talk to? Let me introduce myself. I'm Senator Hugh D. Emmett. How do you do, sir? This, this is my is friend John Toombs. Glad to know you, sir. Marshal. Executive Chairman of the Committee that raised the funds that made this party possible. Thank you, sir. Sergeant, we would like to get the point of view of the soldiers about several things. Soldiers? Yes. We would like to know from you what the soldier thinks. Thinks about what? Oh, well, thinks about political issues. Well, Senator, I don't know. Uh, uh, what gives you the idea that just because a fellow puts on a soldier's suit, he thinks any differently from anybody else? Well, what does the soldier think? I'll tell you, I... Last time, some of us voted for Roosevelt, and some of us didn't. Some of us uh, weren't old enough to vote. Some soldiers think labor's got a right to strike, and some soldiers think labor's got no rights at all. A lot of soldiers have got one idea about what should happen after the war. A lot of soldiers have other ideas. Me, I, 
I haven't the slightest notion what a lot of soldiers think. <clears throat> Senator? Thanks for the cigar. Mm. Well, somebody chipped me with his watch 15 years ago. It's New Year's. Oh, good heavens, we got time. There ain't sag excuses. <laughs> in the new year. That's not what he said. Oh, I didn't mean that. You believe that uh, saying, uh, barking dog never bites? Mm -hmm. Believe anything you say. <laughs> the thing about a dog is, you must never let him know you're afraid of him. That makes him angry. You've got to treat him like an old friend. Yeah. to run into him in a dark alley. Well, what do you think this is? <laughs> surprised when they see you. They'll probably send you back to active duty. That lemonade must have been spiked. No, I really mean it. Do you realize what you did tonight? I bet you couldn't have done that a week ago. What? Well, I watched you all evening when you were dancing and you never hesitated for words and your eyes didn't blink. And then when that dog attacked us, I've never seen anyone quite so fast on their feet. I didn't think about what I was That's doing. That's just it. You were so alert and keen and... And your timing was perfect. I hope you're right. 
I don't believe you on that. Mary, uh, you told me that in eight days, you can do a lot of believing. Well, you see, I'm the fellow that's on the radio that says life can be wonderful. You're wonderful. <laughs> You're just saying that because you know I've got lots of money. You're wonderful. <laughs> because you know I've got very influential You're friends. You're wonderful. Because of my social position. What are you going to do? I don't know. He's going to ask me to marry him. He would have asked me tonight if I'd let him. Did you tell him? No. Are you going back on the train with him tomorrow? <laughs> no, I... I'm going to catch a later train tomorrow night. Why don't you give yourself that extra time with him, Mary? <laughs> because I'm afraid to be alone with him, Aunt Sarah. I, I mustn't tell him. I lied to him. I told him I was going to stay here a couple of extra days. Don't you think he's strong enough yet to know about you? Well, I can't take that chance, Aunt Sarah. He's getting well, and... and I want him to go back to the hospital sure of himself and... and sure of me. Remember, what you have to do may seem to be second best, but it may work out to be first best. <laughs> oh, Aunt Sarah, I hope so. Happy New Year, Mr. Lincoln. Happy New Year, Zach. May I have this dance with you, Sergeant? Happy New Year. That's why you're sweating. It doesn't mean anything. Sit down, Zach. Sit down. Sit down, Zach. Sit down. That's it. Sit down. Take it easy. It is one of those things. They told you it might happen.
know what you're going to have to go through. You're banging away. It doesn't sound that loud. You're just thinking it does. That's all. The doc told you there's nothing wrong with your heart. Beating fast like that doesn't mean anything. This is it. You thought for a minute it wasn't, but it is. You're in for it now. So you're in for it now. You know the next step. You know what's coming now. It's tough to get hold of yourself, Zach. It's tough to get hold of yourself, Zach. Better call for a doctor. Let him get the hypo ready or maybe a tub. for a man to wake up to. How can you stand it so early in the morning? Oh, Dad, it's beautiful music, a lovely day, and a wonderful new year. Oh, that's the trouble with young people. They're so doggone young. Oh, there you are. I was beginning to think I'd have to bring your breakfast up to you in bed. Oh, it's not a bad idea, sir. I might try it sometime. That was the best part of having my appendix out. Oh, please, Henry. One egg or two. Three, I'm hungry. Good morning, Mr. Marshall. Oh, hello, Zach. Happy New Year. Thank you, sir. Happy New Morning. Year to you. Morning. Have a good time last night? Oh, fine, fine. Best party I've been to since last New Year. Uh, have you had your breakfast yet? Yes, sir, early. Well, uh, here's the paper. Make yourself at home. Thanks. Be with you in a minute. Thanks. Drive you down the station. Hope you enjoy Barbara's melodious concert. Who are you babbling to? Zach. Oh, uh, Mary. Morning, Mary. Good morning, Zach. Hey. Oh, good morning, Mrs. Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Zach. I was just in fixing some sandwiches for you to Thank take you. with you. Uh, Mary, don't you think you better go and get ready to go down to the station? Yes, I'll go get my hat and things. I'll be back in just a minute. Mary's fixing up a little box lunch for you. I want to get a string to tie it up with. You know how difficult it is to get anything to eat on the train these days. Very nice of you. Hello, Sergeant. Good Happy morning. New Year. Good morning. Happy New Year. How was your party? Oh, solid. Solid. You going back to active duty, Zach? Well, not for a while, yeah. Gee, you look a lot better than you did a week ago. Feel a lot better. You think it was the Marshall food that did it? <laughs> Must have felt. I think it was mostly your cousin Mary. She's awfully nice. I've noticed that too. You know what? I think I'll marry her. Are you kidding? Oh, not as far as I'm concerned. Of course, I don't know about her yet. Well, won't you mind waiting? Well, that's up to Mary, really. 
things had worked out so well that I may not have to wait as long as I thought. Well, that's what the folks have always hoped for, that she won't have to serve her full term now. The, the fact that they let her out of prison for Christmas is a pretty good sign. You know, it wasn't until the other night when she told me how it all happened that I realized that it really isn't her fault. She's not a criminal. I mean, not like real criminals. Oh, it's too bad that you two can't go back on the train together. But then Mary isn't due in Easton until 9 o'clock tonight. She wants to spend as much time with us as she can, and you can't blame her after being locked up for three years. Come on, Zach. We're going to be late. Mary? Well, goodbye, Zach. Have a nice trip and come back real soon. I hate to say goodbye, Zach. Come on, we're going to be late. Thank you again, Mrs. Marshall. Good luck. Thank you, you got the box? I'll get it. I hope you like chicken sandwiches. Zach, is there any special address, or do I just write to you in care of the hospital at East? Yeah, care of the hospital. You can write to me in care of Uncle Henry's address, and they'll forward it to wherever I happen to be. Okay. Because I won't know what hotels I'll be able to stop sure, at. Sure, sure, I understand. Zach, here. Oh, thank Zach, you. Will you write to me? Sure, sure, all right. Zach, what's the matter? Oh, what's no, wrong? Nothing. I, I, no, Boy! Right. Bye, Mary. Bye. Bye, Zach. Goodbye. Bye. 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 What's the matter with Zach, Mary? He acts kind of strange. I think I know. Zach! They don't break any of those globes. Mother, if you'd been in Mary's place, wouldn't you have got along with Zach? Never mind, dear. Don't ask me any questions. Well, as long as Zach's willing to wait for Mary till she gets out of prison, I don't... Prison? Think... Barbara. Barbara. You didn't tell him. Was it... Was Zach supposed to know? No. Why didn't anybody tell me? Why didn't you tell me, Mother? Sorry, dear. I should have told you. Oh, Mary's always treating me like a grown-up. I didn't want to hurt her. And... No, I... I did something terrible. I didn't want to hurt you. I didn't know. I told him. I'm 
so ashamed. Please forgive me. I love you, Marion. I wouldn't want to hurt you, not for anything. I, I understand something. <laughs> I understand something now that I never knew before, that, that you could make a mistake, do something dreadful with, without me. <laughs> oh, Mary, no. at a time like this. <laughs> the minute I got on the train, I knew why you didn't tell me. <sighs> Nothing matters except that you're here. I'm terribly ashamed of walking out like that. I need you, Mary. I want to feel that you need me. Oh, I do, I do. I'll be right here. I'll be right here waiting. I love you so much. <laughs> 